All right, hello everybody, it's me, Clock, and we're playing Exercise Me, a game by Lemonase. Let's get right in, it's an RPG Maker game. Oh, this game contains attractive men, women, a big church, and a forbidden romance in a janitor's closet. This game also contains light body horror, a terrible priest, terrible surgeons, and gaslighting. Would you like to view the spoiler content warnings? I ah, yes, I would. This game also contains themes of homophobia, conformity, heavy religious abuse, and loss of identity. I will say that if you're uncomfortable with religious themes, do take caution with this. And if you're not one for critique of religion, you're not going to have too much fun with this one. You've heard the warning, chat. Reader discretion is advised. <laughs> now, dear reader, let us begin our descent. You've been warned, okay? This is by Lemonase, by the way, who made uh, the Cardinal Park case and Aquatic Grave, which if you didn't know, you should definitely watch the Cardinal Park case and play it for yourself because it has a clock reference in it. And that's fucking badass. And it's just a really good game. So, who are you? No, really, who are we as people? I really do hate to get this philosophical, but it must be done. For without this knowledge, the story to come won't make much sense. Are we the labels forced onto us from birth? Are we our beliefs, hopes, experiments, experien experiences? It really is impossible to condense our entire being into one arbitrary idea. Hence why the self is an amalgamation of all those things. It is a common belief that the self resides within a person's soul. But that's quite the laughable belief. Where even would the soul be? Our hearts? No. The self resides not in the soul or heart, but rather in the pinkish gray, wrinkly mass of tissue known as the brain. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. It's an answer that doesn't fulfill the fantastical desires we hold. Sorry, one second, I'm just gonna... Boop, boop. But it's true! For when something is deemed wrong with yourself, it isn't the heart that's tampered with. But rather, the brain falls victim to that tampering. Clarence, what's with the long face? You know why. Oh, can it now! <laughs> this really isn't the way I'd like to spend my Sunday morning. Well, this isn't how I want to spend mine, either. My brain is smooth. Oh, that's that's good. You're you're a good boy, Servantly. You just keep playing with your crayons, okay? Stop eating them! Stop eating them! Good boy. Good boy. You should have thought of that about that before going off like you did. You bite your tongue. No amount of complaining will change her mind. Besides, it's not like you could just run. It's not like you could just run out through that massive doorway you entered from. Although, that wouldn't exactly remedy the problem that you have. If you could even call it that. <laughs> look, Cla look, Clarence. This isn't just going to help you. It's going to help all of us. It would be quite selfish of you not to go through with it. Damn. Okay, Mom, you convinced me. That selfishness doesn't matter now, though. It'll be gone once this demon is ripped out of you. Oh. Yes, I better get on with it. Wouldn't want to be selfish. I almost said selfish. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be a shellfish either, to be fair. Although, maybe I wouldn't be so apprehensive about this if they just told me what the heck exercising a demon entails. You should probably chat with some of the guests here. Perhaps they could tell you a bit about what's going to happen. You're practically an adult by now. There's no reason why they'd have to hide something so benevolent from you. Chad, I got that demon in me. And he's a little gay. Exercise me. Now. Now, what is this feeble attempt at escaping? Did you really think that you could get out of this? Damn, they locked the gates. I don't want to show you my feet, chat. I am speed. Let's go bother everyone. You're pretty sure that this woman is an aunt. 
Though that doesn't really narrow down the list of who this is. You've too many aunts to keep count. Aw, oh, Clarence, look how you've grown. Hello, aunt. The memory of her name evades you. She had the courtesy to remember your name, and yet you couldn't even return the favor. I'm Aunt Tia. You don't remember me. You were just a baby the last time I saw you. And I will reiterate that you've grown so much. Soon, you're going to be snatching up all of the women at college. I will say, though, you ought to do something about that hair. It's not very fitting for a strapping lad, now is it? Angry. Guess then I can't be too surprised that that... That's what she thinks. Never mind that, though. It should have been clear just from her coming. Just from her coming her. She just came? So, Aunt Tia, are you looking forward to the grand event? You internally cringe upon hearing yourself describe the event in such a manner. You already know that, yes, she is indeed excited for this event. Maybe she heard from your mother about what's going to happen? Hey, who's going to exercise me? ED? What are we going to do? Why, of course, I'm so excited for this, Clarence. You haven't a clue how happy I am for you. The illness plaguing you will be gone, just like that. I beg your pardon? I'm suffering from an illness I don't know of. You hope to divinity that she says something along the lines of, Well, you actually have this rare, rare illness, and we're not actually here to do what you think. This virus is going to kill you, but don't worry, because with the power of medicine, we'll help you. Don't just giggle. Don't just... <laughs> Me? What the hell? That's ominous! And then, then it'll be like none of this ever happened. Hippa hooray! But of course, the words that pop out of her mouth contradict this fantasy. Clarence, don't act like you don't know. The hair was already enough, Clarence. It's obvious to everyone. And what your mummy told me was the icing on the cake. So be the good lad you should have been and get on with this. Um... chat wait i think this is actually wait i know i read those warnings out loud but i think this might be against gay people you have no clue who this man is nah it's probably like the hair he's dying his hair blonde chat that's most likely the issue and his family wants him to go back to his roots quite literally because he's a brunette and he should stay a brunette the only words that come to your mind when attempting to describe him are manly badass and heroic you're pretty sure that he isn't related to you. But I guess that's the thing about churches. Any random person can come and go as they please. The man appears to be holding a cup of coffee. But there appears to be no liquid inside. Yo, dude! A manly badass hero cameo in the next game? So based. <laughs> it's empty. Like my soul. <laughs> no, Clarence. <laughs> Clarence! No, Clarence! man appears to be holding a cup of coffee, but this appears to be no liquid inside. It's empty. Like my soul. <laughs> dot dot dot. Question mark? Yes, there was a manly badass hero reference based! I love that guy. Ah, it's one of your many uncles. He's the father of your little cousin, Samuel. He's like most husbands in Libretto City. He beats his wife, gets so drunk that he forgets his own name, sleeps with other people behind his wife's back, tried to get his son and wife lobotomized, based, and to top it all off, he goes to church each Sunday without fail. He actually sounds like Mickey Mouse, true. Not without dragging his wife and atheist son. He's pretty happy that you're finally doing what's right for the family. Sorry, let me do that voice right. The man points a mirror in your direction. It's you. You look good. You're tempted to thank him, but you wouldn't know what to say. Is there more dialogue for him? What? what? <clears throat> it's me, manly badass hero. It's empty, like my soul. Is that is that good enough? Uh, is that good? Is that good? Did I do a good job voice acting for manly? He actually, by the way, if you don't know, Manly Badass Hero actually does a really good Mickey Mouse voice. Your relatives have a knack for bringing their pets everywhere they go. This includes more exotic pets, like a hawk. Strangely enough, this hawk is green. You've never seen a green hawk before. It opens its beak to speak in caws and screeches. Thank you, thank you, I'm glad. 
Love, love isn't something you just let go of. Said the... Now wait a damn minute. Who trained this hawk to talk? What? <laughs> love isn't something you just let go of. What the hell? Hello. Something about this person is so familiar. Wait, could that be him? Hey, Ash. Who? Uh, it isn't him. Clarence, what did you say? Oh, uh, it was nothing. The cousin rolls his eyes and gets back to standing. Standing with apathy plastered all over his face. A slight tinge of annoyance visible. He decided to leave him alone. It'd make things awkward if you stayed too long. Cat, cat, cat. Seems like one of your relatives bought, brought a little cat with a dapper top hat. Its tail is moving like the pendulum of a clock. Ayo? Hey. Yo, I don't want to be egotistical, so I'm not going to say nothing. Uh, I, I don't want. I'm. I don't have an ego, so. That's a cool fucking cat, though. Based. That's what I will say. What's up, person? Ah, uh, it's your little cousin Samuel. You haven't seen him in quite some time, even though the two of you were glued to the hip a few years ago. You wonder what he's going to think about you needing this exorcism. You brace yourself for the disappointment. How could my older cousin, who I looked up to, be something so scandalous? That's you, chat. I think that was you. I, I, I won't be egotistical, but you can be egotistical, chat. Then you're pretty sure that it'll be followed by a... But he's doing the right thing by getting that demon exercised. Ah, Clarence. Long time no see. How have you been? Ah, I've certainly seen better days, Sam. What about you? You're in high school now, right? High school's... okay. I guess that you could say I've also seen better days. The silence hangs in the air for a good while, as the two of you stew in misery. Is the cat homophobic? No! The cat cannot be homophobic. The cat is gay. You're the cat, chat. You're chat, chat. I guess that isn't going so well for either of us, huh? Oh, Clarence. I know that this entire family reunion thing is about you or something, so I'm sorry if it sounds selfish for me to ask you something. Samuel, don't be sorry. It isn't your fault that Mother dragged us all here to get a demon out of me. I really don't want to be here for whatever they do to me. I'd rather help help you, if I'm being honest. Promise me you won't tell my mom. You nodded your head in affir affirmation. There's this classmate? A friend, actually? Because of how many classes we have in common, we began to speak to each other, and we've been speaking more now. And at first, I felt like it was all normal, you know, just two people hanging out with each other, nothing more. There's a butt to this story, isn't there? This too, you've both got butts. Do you know what it's like to look at someone and feel this pounding in your chest? Like your heart's gonna run into their arms if you don't stop looking at them? But then, then you can't stop, because that person is your future. They're who you, spe you, who you see spending a good chunk of your life with. And then you just want to know them as something so... So much more than a friend. Personally, I believe that you should ask her out. You're going to regret it if you don't take that chance with her now. But Clarence, I... I... They're not... Samuel's lips hover by your ear and he begins to whisper. Dot, dot, dot. Clarence, he's a boy. He's as much of a boy as either of us. And these feelings... Shouldn't I be having them for a girl? You pause, attempting to think through what to do. Sam, let's go somewhere a bit more private. Make sure that no one else is too close. You wouldn't want anyone to eavesdrop on this. Lest Samuel end up in the same position as you. Samuel begins to elaborate in a blubbering tone. Clarence, what's wrong with me? I'm not supposed to feel this way towards my best mate. Yes, you are. You're just supposed to say no homo at the end. No, I'm kidding. Samuel, there's nothing wrong with- There's everything wrong with it! What's my mother going to say? What's my mate gonna say if he finds out? 
Although you know the truth about what would happen, you decide that clarifying that wouldn't be the most comforting. Clarence, you and Asher were best mates, right? I, I, need to, I need you to tell me how I should be feeling towards my mate. You want a mate with your mate? Based. Look, I can't exactly do that. I can't change the way you view your friend by telling you how I view Asher. But why? Maybe if you tell me? I, I could sort of force my mind back to normal? I don't know, but I'm desperate for any solution. It's not a problem. Your family is the problem. I can't tell you about that because... Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, wrong voice. I can't tell you about that because... Asher and I were... You can't bring yourself to say it. Even if you know it, that it could comfort Samuel. Asher and I... Best mates. <laughs> There's no way in hell that she said that. That's exactly what she said. You go with that lad one more time and you'll never see the light of day again. And yet here you are. With that lad she speaks of. Quite the rebellious streak you've got going, Clarence. Based. <laughs> Gay. <laughs> Yowie. Yes! Perfect! Asher, you're quite the bad influence on me. Ah, oh, I'm s am I so bad? I mean, all that I did was take you out without your- without our parents' knowledge. And let's not even talk about how I got you to kiss me. Alright, hearing that is pretty damn bad. But at least we haven't done anything scandalous yet. Oh yeah, I- Back in the day, in the Christian days, I was kissing my best mates every day. No homo. I think that you're ignoring the fact that if anyone so much as saw us, that would result in the next big controversy in the paper. Okay, you got me. I didn't think- I didn't quite think that through. Generally speaking, Asher wouldn't behave in this somewhat immature manner. Oh! 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 Lemonace has now informed me that they were 100% platonic. Oh. Based. Fucking based. Let's fucking go! Home of- <laughs> no homo. Uh, he'd always hold a calm, composed demeanor, fitting for a future detective. You know that he reserved this playful persona just for you. Persona! Shoots myself in that. And its energy is contagious. You begin to stifle some laughter as you move closer to him. Pretty. Looking at him is like staring at a vignette. A vignette? Frozen in time, with nothing in focus except for him. It's almost as if every single pesky problem of yours melted away in that very moment. I really, really want to kiss you now. Then why don't you? It's not like it'll get as hectic as the last time. Ah, uh, the last time. The last time the two of you got this close was in the janitor's closet at school. How romantic. Privacy for the two of you is the ultimate luxury. You're hidden away from the critical eyes of the masses. Sorry, Asher. Oopsies. Of course, it was just your luck that the janitor needed to retrieve a mop from the closet. No redeeming none of those! This is a sweet moment, chat. And you had a very pleasant time explaining to the janitor how you had no clue how you ended up in the closet with your best mate. Ain't no sniffa sniffa in either. Uh? Clarence? Clarence, was it? What is it? You know why we can't do that here. Why I can't do it. I have erectile lip dysfunction. Oh no. Asher tries to lighten the mood a bit. Well, you've already broken half of your mum's ex mum's rules just by being with me. Why not go the extra mile? You know me. I'm nowhere near as brave as you. Ow! Rude, chat. I wouldn't exactly call myself brave. I don't blame you, Clarence. And I want you to know that I get it. You know how my old man is all gung-ho about masculinity and all that. I think that your mum would be even worse than my father about that kind of thing. It's just that... 
Keeping us a secret, even when our families aren't around, it's so exhausting. You're struggling too, aren't you? What makes you say that? You were struggling to not kiss me. Alright, you got me there. How about this? We find some somewhere where we can be us, without having to worry about our families. Ah, oh, are you telling me that the inside of the janitor's closet doesn't count? It's almost the perfect place for hopeless romantics like us. The only problem would be how quickly the janitor found us. Just be glad that the janitor didn't tell anyone. The janitor's gay! <laughs> of course I am. I wouldn't want to be married off because someone tattled on us. What? Arranged marriage? Blech. Now wouldn't that be a terrible way for this to end? <laughs> I love that little emo. What is that? What is that? Gibgers. Gibgers. <laughs> Can I get a Gibgers in chat? <laughs> As you think about Asher, you begin to realize that you never got the chance to tell him about this little ordeal you're in. Maybe it's best- maybe it's better that he doesn't know. He'd probably blame himself for this. <laughs> it's so cute! <laughs> chat, you're so cute, what the hell? Cute. Chat is cute. Someone saw the two of us together, and they clearly saw through our platonic act. What do you mean, they saw through it? You don't hold your homie's face in your hands and lovingly stare into their eyes while holding back the urge to make out? What the fuck? What, what is it, illegal for a straight man to do some straight loving with another man? What is this? Of course, being physically close to someone isn't the best way to act platonic. Fuck you mean it isn't. Even if it is a little hard to understand why holding hands is always viewed as romantic. It's not! My hands get cold. You continue to ruminate in your thoughts, forgetting that Samuel was there. Clarence? Is- Clarence? Is everything alright with you? Oh, can I get a stretch check, actually? Ah. <sighs> yeah, crack that. Nice! Oh, um, yes. About your feelings and all, I think... Your words are interrupted by this someone's r arrival. Her face holds a level of smugness that pisses you the hell off. Um, Clarence, I think that I'm just going to go now. And with that said, Samuel disappears through the massive church doors. Poor thing already has to deal with his mother fighting against his drunk father. Wouldn't want him to listen to your interactions with this bitch. <laughs> well now, what are you doing here? The words slide right off of her tongue. Almost like she genuinely hasn't the faintest clue as to why you're here. Hello, Adalia. You don't have anything else to say to me? You spoke so much with that cousin. What? Do you have more in common with him than with me? It's no- it's of no concern to you. You haven't the faintest clue as to why the hell Adalia Hallows is here. To your knowledge, you aren't related to her in any way. It isn't like that matters, though family or not, she's always been a rather insufferable. Clearly, she's here to throw salt into your wounds. How's Asher doing? Like you'd actually care. I love Luminace's art style, by the way. I love, I love the way they draw characters actually based. I think, uh, Luminace is in my Discord, by the way, just a little side note, and they're always popping in, showing off little bits of their art, and I'm always just, like, I'm always just, like, looking out for it, I'm like, oh shit, spoilers, and I'm like, spoilers for their game, and I'm like, yes, <laughs> and I've actually seen a lot of these characters, like, <laughs> a little early, but it's pretty fun, I really like seeing it, so Luminace, thank you so much for doing that. If you're so interested in Asher, why are you asking me? One. The two of you are so, so damn close. I figured that you know every little thing about him. For someone so head over heels for him, you don't seem to want to speak to him. Do I really have a choice? You practically hoard whatever time he isn't spending on work. It isn't like I want to be a nuisance to my beloved. That would make for a terrible impression. 
You feel the bile clawing its way up the back of your throat. Adalia Hollows wishes for the whole damn world to know that she is betrothed to Asher Cypress. The idea makes you cringe. She'd become Adalia Cypress. If you wanted to speak to her, she'd probably insist you call her Mrs. Cypress. Mrs. Cypress this, Mrs. Cypress that. God damn Mrs. Cypress. I hope I'm saying that right. At this point, it's like she's dangling Asher's love over you. Throw up on her, based. I got- I got that demon in me. We can actually do exorcist in this bitch, yeah! Blah! Just throws up in a 360 no-scope on all my relatives that are homophobes. Based. You can't even say anything about it. Adalia would most- almost certainly humiliate you if you did. But what are you meant to do? Grin and bear it? Alright, you've been doing that your whole life. Surely you'll be able to do it this one time. What's the matter, Clarence? Cat got your tongue? No, chat's over here. Or could it be? Adalia, for once in her godforsaken life, hushes her voice. Maybe, just maybe, she doesn't want to humiliate you. After all, it's a habit of hers to broadcast her words to all those in the vicinity. And now would be the perfect time to do that. A spacious church would disperse her message to all in the building. She leans in closely. Could it be that you're just jealous? J jealous? W what do you mean, jealous? Dread creeps up your spine. Does she know? You hope to divinity that she doesn't. Not that divinity would listen to you anyways. If divinity hates people like you so much, there isn't any reason as to why they would heed your pleas. By the way, Mother Charity wants to see you right now. And don't look at me like that. You know that all of this is your own doing. Adalia mutters something under her breath as she exchanges a final glare with you. Something tells you that you don't want to know what she said. In your mind, you quickly piece together why she's been much smugger than usual. What the hell is her deal? She's already betrothed to Asher. She already has him all to herself. Ah. <sighs> You really wanted him that badly. She could have just sent the word and they'd be married. Sometimes, you don't understand the ways in which people view love. You'd like to believe that you're not like Adalia, completely obsessed with Asher. But now that you think about it, perhaps it seemed that way to others. Divinity forbid two young men hold hands or tease each other! Alas, you should... You probably should heed Adalia's words and see Mother Charity. Yeah. Oh, it's the end of the world if I start making out with my homie. I'm just showing him how to kiss. Hee <laughs> hee. Yee, kitty. Seems like one of your relatives brought a little cat with a dapper top hat. Still, it's moving like the pendulum of the clock. You've always, you're, you've always struggled to understand why people love putting candles on the floor of all places. Picture this. You're wearing a beautiful, dazzling dress so long that it trails behind you. Fire, fire, fire. As you walk down the hall, you are so enchanted by the stained glass of the church that you don't even realize. A candle is tipped over and is slowly incinerating your dress. The flames curling up that long tress until finally. Maybe this is why your entire family believes that a demon resides in you. Eh, you make a great horror novelist. Oh god! Woo! Speed! Yeah! Look how fast he is! If that's not gay, I don't know what is. Look at this guy. Speed. <laughs> Mother Charity begins to speak with you. Unholy one, divinity requires a task from you. For the ritual to commence, you must light all of the candles. Mother Charity bestows upon you a holy lighter. Based. Oh. I. Uh, I don't get to do it myself. Uh. 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 Oh. Uh. 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 Oh. Uh. Oh. <laughs> I 
think I broke the game. Give me a second. Did it break? Yeah, I think it broke. I think I broke the game. That's too aggressive. Is there an unbreak button or should I just restart? I didn't save either. Fuck! Well, it's okay. We can skip through that. Okay. Give me a minute. You have to interact from below. Good to know. Good to know. Good to know. Oh my god, game by Illuminates. Continue. Autosave? Okay. All good. The cat was still wagging. I don't know whose cat that is, but pretty cool looking cat. Yeah, Clarence really said, I'll be gay forever if I don't like these candles, bro. What about you? Glued to mother's face is a frown. She's probably thinking about how much of an inconvenience it is that you're even here. Go on, Clarence. Go on with your day so we can get this over with. Okay. Mother Charity begins to speak with you. Okay. Holy lighter. Halt your mo your movement for a moment. Uh. Divinity's love is inevitable. And if you think you can escape it, you're solely you're sorely mistaken. God, she's so beautiful. What the fuck? You can't help but wonder what benevolent deity's love would be inevitable. You know that nun is a freak in the sheets, man. Something about their love cleansing you regardless of your desire rubs you the wrong way. Especially when she a homophobe? Oh my lord! Run along now. Go off and light the candles. Low-key pretty? Brother, she's one of the most beautiful nuns I've ever seen in my life. What? Press enter when the pointer's on red to light the candle. I got this, I got this, I got this. It's just too easy. Look the candle. You wonder why you, of all people, must light the candles. Wouldn't it have been much, so much easier if the candles were already lit? Someone took the time to arrange the candles. Couldn't they have also lit them? No, no, no. We have to get lit. Lit the candle. Lit the candle. Two more. Maybe the ritual's participant is supposed to light the candles as a way of submission to divinity? After all, now Mother Charity can say that you were compliant with the ritual, seeing as how you helped set it up. <laughs> what if it just like the last candle just lights the whole circle on fire and we just burn to death? Oh. Lit the candle. That's lit. Well, nice. Okay. Go along now, unholy one. Light the candles. Uh. Oh! Wonderful. Wonderful! Let's get lit, chat. Submission, kinda gay. You think about how Mother Charity said that divinity holds unconditional love for all humans. Of course, the unconditional part has always been up for debate. Hey, God has unconditional love for everyone. It's the people that don't. Apparently, in order to be worthy of divinity's love, you must follow all the rules laid out in the little book. So much for unconditional love. Lit the candle. Lit the candle. There's so many rules in that little book about who you are allowed to love and who you aren't. If you, weren't, you, if you were to use that book to help find a lover, it would be almost impossible to do so. The more you think about it, the more you think that little book just wants you to make you love divinity romantically. Mother Charity has never had a lover. She always finds something in people that's not up to code with what the book says. But she sure as hell loves divinity. Everything is in divinity's will, she'd always say. You're pretty sure that all of her behavior aligns perfectly with that what the book says would be the ideal human. Which includes bending yourself and other people backwards for your deity you can't prove the existence of. 
At this rate, you're gonna snap in half for divinity. Hey, yo. Lit the candle. That should be all of the candles. Ah. Uh, guess then I should speak to Mother Charity again to start the ritual. Nice. Ah, you've completed the task. Yes, all of the candles have been lit. Come now, let's commence the ritual. Are you ready to start the ritual? You won't be able to go back once you start. Let's get on with it. Hopefully no one else has any new dialogue. Ah, it seems like you're already taking on Divinity's love. It isn't exactly like you have much of a say in the matter. Before the ritual, drink this. Mother Charity hands you a vial of clear liquid. For some reason, the appearance reminds you of disgustingly bitter medicine. Uh, what is this? Ah, I should have known that you would resist. I just wish to know if this liquid is... It's not cum! You struggle to conjure up the warrants to both appease her and obtain an answer. It is divinity's will for you to drink that! They told me so. In order for the ritual to work, this vial must be consumed by you. Bun. Did you just hiss at me, bitch? It is in Mother Charity's will for you to shut the fuck up and drink. Alright, hand me the bottle. To put it nicely, the drink tastes like a teenager's horrible attempt at creating lean. Creating lean? Hey, yo! What does this guy know about lean? The chemicals burn your taste buds. It was in Divinity's will to shove questionable chemicals into your system. In spite of your revulsion, Mother Charity seems quite pleased. Come now, a cleansed spirit awaits you. It was come. No, it wasn't, chat. Got a gooner over here. She's not a that much of a gooner, okay? For bilk milker. <laughs> you stand in the center of the six candles. After everything, you still haven't a clue as to what Mother Charity is going to do to you. <laughs> what? What'd you say, chat? You hope that she simply chants a few prayers and calls it a day. It is how she solves every other problem that falls upon people after all. Children of Divinity. For a split second, you're taken back to the Sunday masses of your youth. Mother Charity always spoke in a thunderous voice like that. We are here for a momentous occasion, children. We are here to help enlighten this confused child. Your face begins to feel hot with mortification. It's already been drilled into your head that this isn't really you. This is just a you who doesn't know what the hell you're doing. There's absolutely no need to further humiliate you. Unless the humiliation is meant to exercise the demon out of you. This young one has rebelled against divinity's will. Therefore, we can only come to one conclusion. A demon runs rampant in his soul. It holds his soul with the foul claws of evil. <laughs> if demons are gay, you can call me a fa- Ah, that was a little inappropriate. Sorry, that's my bad. I, I just- I thought it was kind of funny. My bad. <laughs> Wait a second. Hey! But fear not, children, for he has not been so consumed by evil that the damage is irreversible. Oh, it's all the way. There ain't no going back. There is no going back on this boy. Today he will learn of the true extent of divinity's love. And that love will exorcise the demon out of him. Now, children, pray for him. Pray that we tear the demon out of him. And pray that a good soul remains. There's nothing left in there. People hold their hands in devout prayer. It's almost like they're in a drug-induced trance. In any other situation, this would almost be beautiful. A congregate of people peacefully banding together in support of a loved one. Of course, though... You struggle to see the beauty in it. Maybe just maybe it's not that, though. 
Maybe, just maybe, you'll see the beauty in it after the completion of the ritual. They, they're not trying to pray the gay away. I'm sure they are praying the gay away. <laughs> I mean, who are you to think that you know what's best for you, right? This is going to work. 100%. If it weren't for your irresponsible decisions, you wouldn't even be here in the first place, right? And even then, even then you would have ended up here. What kind of fantasy did you reside in? Where did you think you and Asher were going- would- Where did you think you and Asher would go to be free? The people finish praying, and turn their burning gaze towards you. This is it. By the way, hi there, Silent Whispers. Nice to meet you. Oh, I shit myself. You're going to be everything that people want out of you. The demon's out! The demon's out of me! It's okay, you can stop! You'll love who you're meant to love. You'll be free. Right? Free of all the constraints placed upon you just for something so trivial as romance. In these moments, however, you wonder if it really is your fault. The constraints placed upon you, were they really your fault? Maybe if your self weren't so tainted, you wouldn't even be chained to those restrictions. Your vision goes dark. The body is limp. The numbness. It hurts, strangely enough. It's so cold that it almost burns. Wait, this isn't right. What? Excuse me, was I... Was I in a church or a hospital? What the hell? Vision slowly returns. Would they drug my drink too? Hey, yo. Your eyes both feel both numb and like something is squeezing them. Wasn't there supposed to be some kind of ritual? When did they say anything about... Wait. His eyes are glued shut. Nothing that the surgeons do to him invoke a reaction. Almost as if he's sedated. And then it hits you. He is sedated. That's your body. Where are you? How are you not in your body? This doesn't make any damn sense. Mother Charity always said that surgery was against divinity's will. So then what is this? Before you can elaborate on your thoughts, something sharp prompts at your... Uh Astral projection? No, I think we're getting lobotomized. Yup. Uh, uh. What would happen if that fleshy mass in the head were to be tampered with? I'm gonna just issue a little warning right now. If this isn't- if this is uncomfortable to you right now, you should probably stop watching. You should maybe just listen, okay? And if you don't want to listen, then have a good one, okay? The war there was a warning at the beginning of the video, okay? I'm giving you an extra warning, okay? What if scalpels tore it apart in such a way that it didn't render your body useless? Something snapped away from him in that very moment. Something very important. Once it's gone, it'll never return. And if some part of it remains, it'll never be the same. Clarence Amato graduated from law school with flying colors. His professors praised how focused he was. It was almost as if he had no life outside of classes. He was perfect in their eyes. And he was perfect in the eyes of his family. Thank divinity that you're blessed with a wonderful child, people would always say to his mother. Some would also say, goodness, the treatment worked wonders on him. Clarence hadn't a clue as to what they were talking about. Of course, he didn't care to ask what they meant by that. He wasn't supposed to question it. But he was content with being perfect. Absolutely, positively, perfect. Exactly as a young man like him should be, right? Obviously, Clarence had to enter the workforce. What kind of man would he be if he didn't? So he joined the 13th Precinct of Libretto City. The precinct was always looking for new talent, due to how understaffed they were. 
Clarence didn't care much for detective work. True, he was detached enough from his surroundings to be able to stomach the violence involved in the field. But that same detachment was exactly why Clarence didn't truly give a shit. He was just there for a paycheck. When Clarence entered the office, there were a couple of detectives, all chatting with each other while sipping scalding coffee. One of them glanced at Clarence. This detective had deep brown hair, ivory skin, and emerald green eyes. Clarence felt an odd sense of familiarity, even though he had never seen this person before. The detective took a quick glance at Clarence, and it seemed like that would be it. <laughs> but he then looked at Clarence again, this time with a surprised look. Dude, nice. Clarence could have sworn that this young man was going to spit out his coffee with the look on his face. The young detective nearly spilled his coffee while getting up from his seat, and as his co-workers looked at him with absolute bewilderment. Yes, if you didn't know, yes, this is from uh, the Cardinal Park case. This is the protagonist. Thankfully, he didn't make an absolute mess. C Clarence, is that really you? I, I haven't seen you in so long. I thought that something happened to you. Do I know you? The stranger gawked at Clarence with confusion and disappointment. Clarence? Wait, maybe not? Wait, what? Ah, oh, okay, he looks really similar. Okay. I was- I recognized the last name, that's why. Clarence had absolutely no clue how this man knew his name. Okay, and I knew- and I do remember that you said that Dad was also worked too, as a detective. Thank you. Oh, that's sad. Neither of the men wore name tags, and this was Clarence's first day in the office. I thought this was just like a- to be fair, when I saw that, I thought that was just him, like, seeing him as, um, Asher, not actually being Asher. <laughs> the stranger held his head low, like a child who had been scolded by his parents. Clarence's eyes were caught by the contents of the stranger's desk. A photo of the stranger and a strawberry blonde woman was held in a wooden frame. It appeared to be a wedding photo. Wow! Lovely looking! The stranger's face looked absolutely miserable in the photo. A slight frown was glued to his face. He's just a very serious man. Yep. However, Clarence couldn't tell for certain if the marriage was arranged or not. The stranger looked so miserable that he must have been forced into this marriage. It was the very first time Clarence had ever seen a man unsatisfied with what might be an arranged marriage. But the woman's pose and countenance conveyed a completely different story. How could a man not be happy with a wife like that? Clarence thought. Oh, she's a bitch. That's why. Clarence eventually found out that this stranger was named Asher Cypress. He was, supposedly, the top detective in the precinct, having cracked the most high-profile cases in Libretto City. Clarence had heard the name before in the morning paper. He expected Asher Cypress to be a cold, stoic figure. How else could one manage the gore seen on the job? Clarence sure as hell didn't think this chatty young man was THE Asher Cypress. Whenever Clarence so much as walked outside of the room, Asher would drop whatever he was doing and begin to chat with Clarence. Asher would ask stupid things like, Did I do something, Clarence? Clarence figured that it was self-explanatory as to why he gave Asher the cold shoulder. Clarence had no idea what the hell was Asher's deal. Asher acted like he and Clarence were close friends, even though they had never seen each other. And in the back of Clarence's mind, he couldn't help but feel that Asher viewed them as something much more. Much. Much more than friends, let alone acquaintances. And a torn self. So I was waiting for the ending to talk a little bit more about the uh, what we just played, by the way. Um, thank you, Lemonace, for correcting us. Um, yeah, at first I thought it was just, uh, like, I thought it was just the protagonist looked like Asher. I didn't think they were actually related. And then it was like, and then I saw Cypress and I was like, wait, that is his last name. And I was like, wait a second. <laughs> but thank you for clarifying. I much appreciate that. That was very, it's always nice to have the developer with you. 
Uh, secondly, holy fucking shit, that was a little sad. Just a bit, eh? So that was Exercise Me. If you don't want to listen to my little after-game rant, have a good one. Um, and if you do want to listen to my after-game rant, obviously, as the warnings... <laughs> I love that emote. The, <laughs> the fucking Pedro Pascal emote of him laughing into crying. Literally in tears right now, that was so good. Yeah, that was an amazing short game, obviously. It was obviously connected to the Cardinal Park case. I believe it's connected to Aquatic... Like, I believe they're all in the same, like, universe. Obviously, you didn't need to play this, but, uh... I think you need to play this. Fuck that, actually. Never mind that. You need to play this. This was great. Um, I think a lot of... Uh, well, I didn't want to be... I didn't want to single anyone out. You're either gonna love or hate this if you liked Aquatic Grave. <laughs> yeah. Um... In a way, I don't think many people can hate this. Um, I think a lot of, you know, LGBT people can kind of uh, see, you know, where this game is coming from. And have probably experienced some very, very similar things, especially Catholic ones, uh, Christian ones. Um, and if this game affected you at all, I'm sorry. Um, but it was really good, and I think it was interesting to see, even if it didn't have a happy ending. There's only one ending, I believe, from the webpage that I read. Um, and obviously, you know, I'm pretty sure they gave him, I don't know if, uh, it was a straight lobotomy or it, or like a, like a fantasy lobotomy. Cause I'm pretty sure lobotomies do, well, I thought they did affect your, like other functions too. Like obviously in this version, it basically cut his feelings off. Like he basically felt nothing anymore. Um. Is he married? He married his mom or not? Um, so Asher married his mom. And Asher and the mother is the mother of the protagonist in a Cardinal Park case. It's only sometimes, to be honest, it depends because everyone is different. I'm not sure. This is a free game, by the way. I'll have the link in the description of the video below. Um, but yeah, it was clearly a lobotomy, which is something that I do know that they used to perform on people who were outside of normal conventions. Back in the day. St I, I say back in the day. Probably in some countries they're still doing it. Which is horrible. Um, not as bad as death. Because there's a lot of countries that still serve death. To people who are gay. Slash LGBT. So that's pretty horrible. Yeah the brain is really complicated. Obviously. Yeah obviously. <laughs> Happiest decision I made to get one. Yeah get I know you got one. I performed it. It went successful. It unlocked your puns. Um, but yeah, I also love the references. The manly badass hero reference was amazing. That was so good. I loved it. And I love the empty coffee cup. I don't know if you couldn't fit a garbage can or something in there, but I think it works just as well. Um, yeah, and I know lobotomies aren't perfect because they're literally a consequence of just stabbing a needle into the brain. And back then, they didn't have the technology we have today. The hawk was a reference to Hawk Zombie, an hawk zombie another streamer. Thank you! I was gonna ask about that, because I figured it was a I, I totally figured it was another reference. Yeah, I really liked the references. Especially the manly one. That was awesome. And, um... I won't take credit for the cat one. Yeah, I won't take credit for that. <laughs> Uh, this actually reminded me of one of my best friends was forced to go back to a basically a conversion camp when we were like preteens. Old, old memory unlocked. Yeah, um, it's still today. They still have uh, conversion camps today, like Catholic conversion camps and stuff like that. And I really wish they would outlaw those because it's just messed up uh, what they do there. I've literally, this is like a true story. They've, there are literal places where they will strap a teenager to a chair. And force them to watch straight corn. Ow. It's corn. No, no, not that kind of corn. The bad... The, not bad. Just... Uh, you know what I mean, okay? When I say corn, I'm saying it in the um, other sense, okay? Not that eats corn, okay? But watches corn. And uh, they literally do really weird shit like that to somehow make them straight. Uh, obviously, there's more like... Like, more like stupid attempts... Uh, lobotomies are like some of the worst aside from just literal death and beatings 
um because they do that too in lots of countries still to this day and conversion camps still exist promises promises parents that they're gonna somehow make your kids straight and all it does is just teach the child that they're worthless and they have to hide who they are and uh it's pretty bad just like how clarence kind of had to hide who he was and how clarence had to suffer in even in his small moments of happiness he couldn't even have that much right you know he couldn't even have that much because even in his moments alone with asher he still thought about you know the consequences of being with a man um which sucks so it, it, it's really interesting to see games like this i also don't take this the wrong way i appreciate that it had a bad ending um because it's just more realistic i guess in a way um that's a little fucked up to say but obviously i would love a happy ending guys obviously i would love a happy ending but sometimes you don't always get a happy ending you know so anyways if you are gay or lgbt just know this i i'm totally cool with that sort of thing and i believe my community is too i that's the kind of community i want to foster so know this i appreciate you i accept you for who you are seriously okay and i know i make a, a lot of bad jokes about that so shut the hell up geb I'll, I'll i'll kill geb for you chat okay but uh that's the kind of community that i want to foster so thank you so much for watching uh thank you so much for subscribing i know a lot of you guys are uh part of the lgbt plus community uh whatever you are i know i have a lot of fans that are uh gay trans uh lesbian bisexual the bisexuals won't stop harassing me um I guess it's because of the voice, because it's not very manly, but it's also not very girly. So, it's like, yeah. Yeah, I already played the game. I don't know. But anyways, and everyone else, I've even got furries watching me at this point. I don't know why. I just wear cat ears. But uh, just know this. You're accepted here. I love you guys all. Um, <laughs> stop. Stop. You and Gev are terrible right now. Oh my god, I got Ginger in the back saying, No, I don't, I don't. No furries. I got Geb ch chatting, I don't. <laughs> Fuck you guys, okay? That's my community, you know. I know I'm accepted. Not you, actually, never mind. Even furries? Yeah, I mean, they've already kind of popped into my group. I Are furries a part of the LGBT? I don't really know. I just meant that as like, we're a pretty inclusive group. As long as you're not a hater, you're pretty much allowed in. Yeah, furries um, not a yeah, being a furry isn't exactly sexual. I just meant it as like, we're pretty accepting here. Um, and as long as you're not a hater, as long as you're not uh, intolerant, then uh, you're chill. <sighs> yeah, I'm not, I, I think true bum line, I think you know that the fact that your answer, your question got auto modded, I think speaks for itself on what we're not gonna allow, okay? All right. Furries are usually in the LGBT. Yeah, yeah, they do. They are actually. I've noticed that. Um, I'm a hater, Daniel. You're too stupid to be a hater. Okay. Um, and this is getting really long-winded and whatever. Um, yeah. Oh, and if you are a hater for some reason, educate yourself seriously. Like, seriously, just all the all of bigotedness is like could just be explained by talking to someone who's gay and like getting a little bit of knowledge from them seriously it's always amazing to me how you can be so bigoted I don't go near those. They'll <laughs> yeah they'll infect you apparently that's no it won't honestly it'll just make you a normal person and probably make you a lot more tolerant <laughs> you could be a professional homophobe <laughs> like geb anyways thanks so much for watching i don't know where i'm going with this because chat keeps getting me off topic and ginger does too so i'll just leave it off with uh you're awesome just the way you are so thank you so unless you're a murderer yeah awkward for all the murderers out there please um yeah stay away from me um uh, but anyways have a good one everybody my name's clock uh please subscribe like the video and download the game below in the description uh, to rate it five stars because Lemonase is super based and they deserve that much, okay? See you next time. Peace. Oh, I didn't mention the carnival. Hey, Clock's Carnival of Curiosities, YouTube. Join it. Join the Discord. Join the art contest. Please.
Please, we want more art. Draw your OC in a carnival festival, okay? In a carnival, whether it's a clown freak to a whimsical performer, a uh, sword swallower, something carnival themed, and you can join my carnival, okay? And it'll be really fun and we'll show off all the art on October 27th. Okay. You're good, YouTube. Bye. See you later.